Prime Time replay from Money FM 89.3. It's time for Money and Me. I'm Michelle Martin, and today we're going to hack the cash back credit card game. And to help me out is Rohit Murthy. He's country manager at Sing Saver. Rohit, you have some great tips for us today. Yes, uh, lovely to be back again. Great to have you. And also joining us, Dawn Fiona Cher. She's a financial blogger. You know her best as SG Budget Babe. How are you, Fiona? Hi, I'm great. Good great to be back to here again. So I understand that you doubled your net worth in one year in 2017. And you say that one of the most important factors was all the cashback you received? Yeah. All so, your expenses? Yeah, that's right. So in 2017 was when I really sat down and decided that, you know, since I'm spending so much money on credit cards every month, I might as well try and get a little bit more money back in the form of cashback. So then I started um, looking at all the different cards, studying them and came up with my own strategy on how to basically hack them. And that really helped me to save a lot, which then, of course, contributed significantly to the overall um, savings at the end of the year. We need to do a whole show on how you doubled your net worth in one year. <laughs> <laughs> First up, but Dawn, why should people go for cashback? We know that you're a huge advocate for cashback versus the Air Miles cards. So why should people go for cashback credit cards? Um, so if you like seeing money back in your statement every month, or the following month, okay, basically, then cashback is great for you. Um, it's also good for people who do not have the luxury of time to keep scanning and searching for the most available flights according to miles because you have to keep checking that and looking out for those discounts in order to grab them. So if you're always busy and you don't have the time to put aside for that kind of work, then cashback is a really good option. Oh boy, and I just got a miles card. <laughs> <laughs> but miles are great too. It really depends on what you like. Thanks to the good people at Sing Save. I have to say, I'm very impressed by the way you lay out your information Thank and you. help consumers like me make comparisons. Rohit, how do you find the best cash back card that serves your needs? Well, I think the most, the first important thing is you need to understand how much you spend. You know, what, what what's your expenditure like? Uh, is it an average spend? Is it a low spend? Is it a high spend? It can vary by person. $500 sometimes per month, all the way up to $5,000 per month. And then once you start looking at how much you spend, you also need to look at where all are you going to spend it on. So some of them might just have their basic needs where they're just spending it on groceries, transportation, you may be eating out, uh, or you know you just need an easy you need it to double up as an easy link card. Sometimes you might have very specific categories where you shop. I mean, where you spend a lot more on, like online shopping, uh, and you know, in in some cases, even when you're traveling overseas. So I think when you look at cashback credit cards, you start first with these two very important pieces, and once you look at the market, then you'll see that. There are lots of cards uh, that have different, you know, terms and conditions, different sort of rebates, different uh, uh, conditions in terms of, you know, how much you can spend, how much cashback you can get. Mm. So, so there's a lot of complexity also in the market. Mm. But I think, um, as you know, Don was mentioning, it's very important that you have that clarity of, you know, how much do you spend? Where do you spend? And then, you know, what's the sort of goal you're looking at of how much you want to save in a year? Okay, so say we have those two uh, ideas, basically, how much we spend and where we spend primarily. Say you're an online shopper, for example. Mm -hmm. um, can you help us make sense of the terms and conditions? Sure. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the, uh, there are a few things to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. First thing is most of the cashback cards will have a minimum spend requirement in a month. So they would, they would require you to spend 300, 500, in some cases, you know, more than that. So that's important. You need to check because you won't get the headline rate, which is, you know, usually in a percentage of 5%, 8%, sometimes even 10% if you don't spend that. It can even drop all the way up to 0.25% when you miss the minimum spend requirement. Forever or just for that month? For that month. Mm. Yeah, so it's important to keep that in mind. The second thing is the cashback that you get is not, in many cases, unlimited. Some of them, yes, but then obviously the cashback rate is also lower. When the cashback rate is high, usually the banks will cap the maximum cashback you can get, which means that you can get only $50 or $80 in a month, which is still a decent amount of money. But after that, you won't you know, get any cashback. Uh, so it's just capped at a certain amount. And then you start looking at where do I get the cash back? Is it across all categories? Is it, you know, only for certain categories? There are certain cards where you can even when you pay your bills, you can get cash back. Some cards don't give you that. Uh, you may be paying for insurance. You can get cash back on that. Some cards don't give you that. So then you start looking at, you know, again, back to my point, you know, the, the terms and conditions are important around 
where am I getting that cash back? Mm. And then, of course, um, some people have resistance to paying fees. There are cards where you can actually waive off the fee if you spend a certain amount in a year. Some cards actually waive the fee for you, meaning there's no annual fee for the first two years or forever. Mm -hmm. So that's also a consideration when you're looking at cashback. We're going to go through certain categories. A single person out there, which card is best for you for cashback? If you're dating, what will work for you? I suppose you're eating out a lot. Uh, If you're a young mom, uh, what card suits you best? So you can call through right now. We've got some cash for you well not really cash it's a voucher it's a $50 NCUC voucher it's quite a bit of groceries and we've got two of these so if you have any questions on hacking the cashback game now is the time to whatsapp us your questions at 9717-8893 first two with a great question walks away with that $50 NCUC voucher you can also call me if you'd like uh, to join us on air at 669-11-893 put your question directly to our guest Dawn how much money can be saved each year with these cards typically? It really depends on how much you spend. That's the number one rule. And um, using the right card to maximise your spending would then give you a lot more back in return. And the other thing to note is that, you know, your spending might change from time to time. So, for instance, on my own end, um, last year, when I was pregnant for most of the year, in the beginning, I was shopping a lot for baby stuff. So, shopping and buying that online through shops like Shopee, Popsic, um, and all the different online stores that sell them would give me a higher return if I use a card that gives me online shopping returns. Which card was that? So um, I use mostly the OCBC 365. Sometimes I mix it up with the OCBC Frank. Um, For those who are on... uh they are, they are higher income they can also look at other cards like for example um, BOC and then for the younger folks if they're not buying baby products but they're buying like fashion clothes online then, yeah online yeah. you'll be uh, YOLO is a pretty good one as well because it gets good uh, returns on that so that's for like when um, that was last year right majority of it was online and then after that ever since when I gave birth in November congratulations the, wow, thank you <laughs> so um, the bulk of my spending in that month was on my hospital bill right so then I used the CIMB MasterCard which gave me um, I think about it's 10% back mm. on health Wow mm, But there's a catch Of course So I actually A maximum cap. cap Correct mm. I max out the cap Do you remember that cap? Um, so, I think it's yeah, It's $100 I think yeah, right? I think the CIMB cards Have $100 per month Yeah yes. um, It's $50 per category Per I category think. So the correct. health component I got the max And mm. then for the other components In that month Because I also bought stuff from uh, For the baby and myself Through the different categories mm. I used that same card as well And I also got 10% back So that was quite um, A good cash back In November And then in December Of course I didn't have have any hospitalization bills so I kind of retired that card for that month and I went back mm. to using um, my OCBC 365 for other spending so you know the thing about cashback cards is that you can own multiple cashback cards and vary your spending each month once you know roughly where will your big expenses be if for instance you have lots of dining dates in that month then go for a dining card like the OCBC 365 or yep. Yobi YOLO or CT cashback which gives you um, 8%, 8% yes yeah. 8%, yeah. Then Undone. if you see yourself going out for entertainment in another month, um, mm. like, you know, lots of clubbing or movies, yeah. then going for another card which gives you high entertainment rates would give you better you for that month. What are these high entertainment rate cards? No, I mean, oh, Yolo y- 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 is one of them, actually. Yeah. Um, y- it's a very sort of millennial-friendly card which gives you on entertainment and dining. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's a very important point that, uh, you know, as the card, as you're looking at your expenditure, and your expenditure might change. I mean, even for me, I, you know, when I had... You know, young kids. I mean, I still have young kids, but then you know, when they were like really uh, infants, uh, my grocery expenditure went up, and mm. we knew we were not going to travel much that year. So it was important for me then to also look out for the right cashback card. And then I was very clear that you know we were going to be spending on dining, groceries. You know, there was Grab, and then my dad has a car, so the petrol, and then I used a city cashback card. It gave me eight percent on all those four categories, and about thousand two hundred dollars you can save in a year. So, Mm -hmm. and that was a decent amount of money that Mm -hmm. you save by just using one card where you know majority of your expenditure is going to be on that. Or even worse, using cash. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Even worse. <laughs> because you, you get nothing back if you use cash. Yeah, I'd like to look at your Rolodex of credit cards. So how many do you have? Um, I think I have about six credit cards in my wallet. Mm. So I rotate between them depending on which month and what expenses I get. So one way I manage that would be through the SGBB cashback app. So um, so for instance... That's you your own app, on, right? Yeah, I created so, my own app. Yeah. But um, anyone can download it basically for both uh, Apple and Android Is phones. it free? Uh, yeah, it's free. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. Ch- I don't charge for it. So basically, like you can scan. If you see, for example, um, you're spending a lot on entertainment this month. Yeah. If you click on entertainment, you then see, oh, you have all these cards, and they're ranked from highest to lowest cashback. So then you can decide if that using that card is great for that month. But oh. of course, you know, we don't always only spend on one category per month. So you've done all the work for us. Yeah. Okay. I so <laughs> see, see, I spend a lot on on eating out. Okay. Fiona, using your app. Tell me, which card ranks up there? Okay, so for eating out, um, some cards have different rates for dining on weekends versus weekdays. Okay, weekday eating out. Weekdays, okay, let me see. So it's a 365 now still gives you the 6%. On both weekday and weekend. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. CIMB gives you the 10% on the dining. Uh, City gives you 8%. So, so yeah, there are quite a few cards out there this for dining. This is on certain right. outlets, right? Not all. Uh, not some all. of them have actually, uh, some of them have their own dinings program. Obviously, the, a lot of these banks have their own sort of nice dining programs. But mm. yeah, a lot, dining can be a very broad category. So, exactly. if they're not restricting you it. You got some choices options. for us? Yeah, Fiona? over on the app, um, the highest would be the CIMB Visa mm. Signature right now at 10%. As well as the CT cashback app that okay. uh, cashback card that Rohit mentioned mm. at 8% yeah. but the catch is so if you're spending 600 minimum a month then go for the CIMB visa signature but if you have higher expenses usually because if you're driving and you have kids then the city cashback would be better because the 888 minimum a month is not that hard to reach hey you know a lot of our listeners are drivers and petrol is important to them is mm. there a category for drivers yeah so if you spend a lot on your petrol then um, the city cashback would be a good card Otherwise, for petrol savings, according to my app, <laughs> UOB1 is also a good tiered card. So the other thing that we haven't yet talked about would be the uh, category of credit cards where they are tied to your bank account. Mm-hmm. So you not just get thing cash back on your cards, but also higher savings on your bank account. Okay, mm. so we've got a question from a listener here. What is the best card, not so much for online shopping, but for groceries with no minimum spend per month? So uh, this mm. person spends on groceries, they don't want a minimum <laughs> spend, they want the best rebates. No minimum spend. How much are they planning to spend on groceries? <laughs> I have no idea. No, I think uh, there are a few... Um, Specific, and while she's going to pull that magic out of the app, um, there are a few grocery specific cards in the market. Like UOB has a delight card for all your cold storage purchases. You know, there's an NTUC specific card. Uh, you know, OCBC has that. So I think it's also important for you to check where, which are the supermarkets you typically spend. People, mm-hmm. I mean, people don't switch supermarkets that easily, right? It's usually you end up going to the same supermarket. And once you, you know which is a the supermarket, then you also have cards that actually give you higher rebates when you go to those specific mm. and those are really you know attractive sort of rebates that can go all the way up to you know higher than 7% and 10, 10 to 12% so i think it's important that you know you first check which is the supermarket you're going mm. like when i go to a certain supermarket and if i'm using the wrong card i mean that's the worst feeling when you stand there and they say do you have this specific <laughs> card and you're like oh you know i picked the wrong supermarket <laughs> so, and you don't want to do that so so i think that's why it's important that you first start there and then right. there are cards specific for that yeah, yeah exactly so i'm pulling up my app right now um the maybank family and friends card offers a pretty good rate of eight percent or five percent if you go to cold storage or fair price um but the catch is you have to spend five hundred dollars minimum a month, which is quite reasonable because if your grocery bill with that, mm. you're, you're easily going to be able to hit yep. that. The other one would be the city SMRT. So for someone who buys very little groceries, mm. um, you can use this card, and it's three percent or five percent with a minimum monthly spend of uh, five hundred. And the uh, merchants would be mainly Fair Price, Giant, or Sheng Siong. Great advice there. Here's another question from a listener. This is called Money and Me. No question too simple to come. Uh, at us and, and, and we'll put it to our guest Does, do debit cards have cashback facilities? Uh, yes there is the DBS um, debit visa I think that's the only one that I know of though um, it was previously offering a 5% cashback headline rate but it came with the catch that you should not be redrawing um, too many times in a month there's a limit 
Uh, yeah. So okay. I think uh, I can't remember exactly how many mm. times. Uh, mm. I think it's like fifty times three or four times maximum. So if you're someone who always withdraws from the ATM, then that card wouldn't work. But for young folks who pay a lot through um cashless uh, or contactless uh payments, then that card was great, and I was recommending it very very um ex- uh excitedly during that period. Again, the, the name of that card is DBS Visa Debit. Okay, well, and I, I didn't think, think there was a debit card. I, I think this is an important thing, right? When people think of debit cards, I think as the golden rule with credit cards is pay your bills in full and on time. Mm. And when you do that, you, you will get, you know, a lot of, I mean, rebates are higher typically on the credit card. So it's mm. important that you just keep that golden rule always in mind. Correct, uh, correct. And then you can, you know, shop around uh, and you have more cards to shop around from. Here are more questions coming from listeners. They're pouring in. What is the best card for a big spend on a wedding? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are actually uh, there are cards that give you unlimited cashback. Uh, what that means is you don't have a cashback cap. Uh, so there are two two cards in the market which are interesting. So usually cards will have a fifty dollar cap or eighty dollar cap. So there's a Stand Chart Unlimited card and there's an American Express True Cashback card. You know, very similar value propositions in the sense that they give you. 1.5% cash back, but they have no a minimum spend and there's no cash back cap. Um, actually, the Amex True Cashback also gives you 3% in the first six months. So if you are, you know, your wedding is in the first six months, you would put it on the Amex True Cashback. Whereas the Unlimited card also gives you 15% on grab rides. So it's these two cards you can actually, if you put a really big ticket purchase, like if it's, you know, very significant amount mm. and in fact when the number goes up to about seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars you actually see a lot of value you get back out of this card because there's no cap so you can end up saving actually more than thousand you know dollars in just cashback savings mm. i've written about this on my blog before in mm. detail um but a quick summary would be um pairing it up with multiple cards including the yob one card with your yob one account um, the SCB Manhattan card, if someone has already had that, as well as an unlimited card such as Amex True Cashback or even Maybank FC Barcelona. So for the merchants that are unable to break up the payments in installments for the couple, then put it on your unlimited card. The ones that can, then put it on the card like Yobi One or Manhattan, and you'll be able to get like the maximum cashback that you can get for a wedding by maximizing this um, combination. We've only got thirty seconds left on the clock, <laughs> but I want to get another question from a listener. In which card is best to use for overseas online courses? Mm, that's an interesting um, one. I usually wouldn't recommend cashback cards, honestly. Why not? Because um, the conversions rates and fees would kill you for cashback. So this is weird, but this is where I'm going to throw in the spanner and say, oh. use a mouse card. <laughs> <laughs> That is so generous of you, Aaron. Wouldn't be that generous, but yeah. Because you don't want to waste your money on the conversion rates. Yes, that's what exactly. You're it would eat into you your agree? cashback. Do you mm-hmm. agree? With yes, I mean there are FX fees. Uh, I, I think the CIMB cards. Um, I need to check if they still, you know, waive the admin FX admin fees. But she, she makes a great point that you, when you're spending overseas, there are FX, you know, rates and there are FX conversion fees, and that can eat up into you know whatever you know overseas cashback you're getting. We're yeah. still getting more questions coming in, but I'm sorry, guys, we have no time. Time to thank. Thanks the uh, fabulous guest with me today. Rohit Murthy is country manager at Sing Saver. Don Fiona, share financial blogger, better known as SG Babe. You can head to Sing Saver for more great financial comparison charts, all the info. And your app is called? SGBB Cashback App. Fantastic. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you.